Okay, so back onto this tank assembly that I've been mucking around with for months. Um, so there's a two-fold problem here. First, all these bolts snapped off, uh, except for one it looks like. So, <clears throat> these are actually M5 by 0.8. They're not M6 and they're not M8. So what I did, I got, first we're going to try extracting them. Um, so I've got a center punch, and we're going to try drilling through some of these and see if we can extract them. If not, we can helicoil them, no big deal. But um, I think part of the issue, I might have to grind some of these down for a flatter surface. And if we're going to be grinding, I need to get this fuel out of here, and the fuel is really bad as it is. So if you can see, it's actually almost yellow or orange. So what I'm going to do is suck all this fuel out with this handy dandy drill pump and the hoses they gave were not very flexible. So we're going to pump this side and you can see it comes out of this side. It's all nice and bright yellow, which is interesting. This hasn't been sealed, so it's kind of been exposed to the air and the elements. And I actually put in two different Amazon pumps, and they both rusted up and failed. So I got to take care of this problem quick. So we're working on the sender. I'm going to drain this fully so we can one put new fuel in, and two um, potentially even fill this with water. So in case I have to do any kind of grinding, any there's no sparks or vapor issues. But we'll see. Maybe I'll just drain it and uh, use like a die grinder or something or a file to get these flat so I can center punch them and then try drilling them. We'll see. But I'm going to finish getting this uh, fuel out and go from there. All right, next day we've got our drill bit. Uh, we also have an extractor. I didn't have a mini tap holder, so this is working okay. And we've got our holes drilled. You can see here I've got uh, maybe yep, one here, two, this one was already out, three, four. These I just dremel down. Uh, it's like a dremel bit, like so. So now what I can do on these remaining three is use a center punch. It's right in the middle, and then I can center the drill bit. And then what I'm doing is drilling until I see a little bit of rust coming back up the drill bit. That means I'm through the bolt and I'm penetrating what's ever underneath, the metal underneath, because these don't go through to the tank. Now, unfortunately, I've already soaked this with ATF and acetone. Uh, I tried some freeze spray, but the issue is these are not even, these aren't even moving, even I don't want to put too much torque on it and then snap the extractor, but these are uh, locked in there pretty good, so I'm not sure what to do at this point. I don't want to snap the extractor, I don't want to break anything, uh, I don't want to drill them out and tap them, I just kind of want to pull these studs out. So maybe I go a little bit bigger on the drill bit until the, uh, the remaining the bolt kind of disintegrates in the threads and then I can thread them, re-tap them clean them out but we'll see because this I mean I'm putting pretty decent amount of torque on this and it's just not even moving so if you have any ideas or what do you use to loosen these let me know uh, I was thinking freeze spray might work or liquid nitrogen but I don't have any liquid nitrogen I tried the freeze spray it didn't do much so I'm going to center punch the remaining three and then drill these through and then I don't know let this soak overnight see what happens Okay, good news, bad news. Bad news is the extractor just didn't work. I went even one bigger size extractor and it still wouldn't even turn uh, the broken bolt. So what I did was um, just went up one size on the drill bit and then drilled through. And then I have my M5 by 0.8 tap on the vice grip and that worked perfectly to chase the threads and use the original bolts so I didn't even have to helicoil it new threads nothing like it's perfect 
and uh, it found the threads so we're good just got to repeat the process for the remaining holes and talk over the trucks again that always drive by with uh, loud exhausts and go from there you can see here the vice grip on the tap if I had a smaller tap holder I would use that but I don't want to wait another day for Amazon so this worked really really well as long as you center punch those bolts then uh, drill straight down you should be good and you shouldn't have to re tap a bigger size or anything so that's like that use the spray cleaner to clean it up magnet drop down in there later when we're done to get all the shavings and uh, we're good to go I did get the M5 uh, helicoil thread kit here just in case um, Amazon has them for like 10 bucks or something comes with bigger you know, threads and all that a drill bit and everything else to uh, oh, that's, not, that's actually not even it that's the one I thought it was I think this is the M6 kit and then here's the M5 kit here by 0.8 with the drill bit and the tap so it has everything really cheap so i'm gonna finish this up and uh stop by when we're done look how beautiful that looks it all worked out so i'm gonna get some um, red or green scotch bright and just do the perimeter of this for the gasket so that seats all right and then um, assemble finish assembling the sending unit clear out any uh, shavings in there and put it all back together so if anyone tells you, you have to drop the tank to fix your fuel sending unit or your bolts tell me you saw someone on YouTube that broke two four six eight all eight of the mounting bolts and was able to fix them okay got the gasket in here just loose we scotch brighted the perimeter uh, so next up we got to finish that sender stick it in I stuck a magnet down there got all the shavings uh, but we are looking good here. We are looking good. Here we have a tail of two setting units. Obviously the one that's all crusty has been that's original. Have some modifications here for the wiring and the return, which probably broke off some point in time. And here's the new one. And this, the actual sending, the fuel level sender is sold separately as a heads up. Now, what we need to do, this is our Toyota Denso Supra twin turbo pump. We need to get this on here, um, just like so, and then attach it with a little stub of rubber line. And then we have to cut the brand new connector, unfortunately, to do eyelets on top right here with this crimping tool and then their heat shrink uh, over it you can see um, past life me used regular butt connectors which worked but the uh, crimp ones are better with the heat seal so I'm, I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut this as close to the connector as I can because one, these connectors are available, and two, I need all the length I can get. This, this one's going to be so close. Luckily, the ground is on the back side, so it'll, it should work right there with a little eyelet connector on it. So now I'm going to guess that this is, uh, what, about 14 gauge, 16, something like that, 14 gauge. So we're going to strip those, and then we're going to put this, hopefully you can see what I'm doing, yes, I'm just going to put the blue one right there, and then line up the blue to blue, which is the center, like so, and we are going to crimp, squeeze all the way, and that's done. You can do it again, but like it's already as crimped as it's going to be and then we can we can fold these 90 degrees so the eyelets are 
horizontal. So here's the blue again. And this is actually a little bit different crimper than the normal one. It's made specially for like these type of connectors. But 20 bucks or 23 bucks are super nice. All right, once that's done, we can apply a little heat. You can use a heat gun um, so it's not as intense or propane or whatever. You just want that uh, plastic to shrink a little bit. Hopefully they're fuel safe. I mean, that I don't know. Hopefully. If you give it too much heat, it'll melt. You gotta kind of be ginger with them. Much too lazy to get the heat gun. Okay, almost there. Now we need to fold these over 90 degrees. Okay, needle nose works good for this. Basically you just grab the end of the eyelet and then use your finger to bend it at an angle. And that will give us the sufficient length and distance that we need to then hook up this wire to this terminal hopefully. If not, we're going to have to rethink this and extend the wire or something. Um, yeah, looks like we are going to be too short. That's unfortunate. And this is riveted on this one. Oh man, all sorts of, all sorts of issues today. Okay, let's see what I can do here. Okay, I've got my rubber connector tube on here. Uh, this is going to be pretty short. This is on so tight, um, you probably don't even need a clamp, but we're going to stick these factory clamps on there if they work. Constant tension or whatever they're called. Yeah, that'll work. So that can stick like that. And then I put a nut on the end of this for a little bit more length. And then I'll put the second nut on top. Um, once I do this. And love them and hate them. Okay, I'm going to put this on here. Oops. Hit the camera per use. Okay, so that is gonna sit like that. Okay, so I guess the appropriate thing to do would have been to re-rivet this, but I had to extend it either way because it was just like a millimeter too short. So I'm okay with that because the car is old and honestly it's gonna be fine like that. So now all we gotta do is attach the positive in the ground to the respective terminals and then uh, move on to the sending unit. So I'll get these tightened up. Not much to see here. I'm just tightening and then I'll remove the spacer nut too while I'm in here. So we don't need that anymore. That's The ground is actually M4 and I think the, um, the positive is smaller so it's probably going to be like an M3 or something. But I don't quote me on that. Okay, so that'll look something like that. And I'll just, you know, leave the wires. You don't want to zip tie, put a zip tie in here because that'll zip tie will just corrode and break and sit at the bottom of your tank. You can put a zip tie here, but again, this pump's not moving and it's really not necessary. So I'll tighten those up and I had to use the worm gear here, as you can see, because the clamp factory clamp broke. I don't have any more, so we'll just have to deal with it. So, so far so good. Okay, 
now we're on to the sending unit. So this has came with five screws. Two are going to hold it to the the sending unit, the uh, gauge level sending unit, not the actual pump sending unit. So we are simply going to look at the old one here, and then we're going to know that black is on the right, white is in the center, and then red is on the left. So we're not. There's no way to mix this up. And actually, if you look up here, this is also red. This first one's black, and this middle one's actually brown. Uh, but on the inside, it's well, actually no. The original here looks kind of brownish, unless it was um, changed or dyed by the the gas in there. Because on the new one, it's definitely a white wire. So either way, you can look on top or the old one. So black, white, red. Hook those up. And actually, I probably want to secure this first. That would make more sense. Only two holes for two screws. So we'll put that on. Make sure not to bend the rod while you're doing it. Okay, we got this secured with the two smaller screws. Now I'm going to flip this over and what I need to do is, is hold this up. It's very important that we do not bend this sending um, fuel level gauge because it'll mess up uh, your your readings. So I need to find something. We'll use the... Oh, well, that's not going to work. That might work. There we go. So, like I said before, we're going to do... And these three screws are bigger than the actual screws that hold the thing to it. Alright, so we've got black, white, red. So, I'm sure I'm blocking everything. It's fine. Black on the right. Okay, now white. Man, these wires are just so short. They don't give you any extra play in them. There's your white, and then we'll do the red here. There we go. The OCD in you, the um, wires. I mean, it doesn't matter which what angle they're at, or you know, if this one looks like that, or if it's pointing down, I mean, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. Factory, they're all pointing straight down. Okay, so that's it. Sending unit, fuel level. There's a little metal clip here you can actually bend. How's the factory one look? Oh, well, it's down, it's bent down but you can bend it up a little bit to give you a little bit more length. And then this is all screwed on there. Here's your low level here. So this is how much fuel you actually have left, basically from here to here, when your low light comes on. Um, so this is the light, this little knob, and then this is the level. Two different things, not related. They are, but they're not. It's two different mechanisms. So I've already tested the pump. I know the pump works. Now all I gotta do is just drop it in, plug it in, make sure uh, it starts pumping and the car works. Alright, back to the car. This red wire here is a relay uh, I ran basically just to give the pump more voltage or more uh, thicker gauge wire. Um, but um, for this sake I'm just going to use the stock wiring again because, uh, yeah. The thing back in the Mitsubishi world, you just run a bigger gauge wire to a relay and the battery and then feed the pump and you run thicker wires into the housing and then down to the pump. So this would be like a 10 gauge or 12 gauge instead of this thinner stuff. But that's neither here nor there. So we've got the new gasket. This is going to go, looks like it's going to go around uh, here. And then you're going to pull the little nubs through the uh, sending unit thing here. That'll secure it like so. I think this is the last beautiful day, 70-something degree day in late October. So i got to get this car done running. 
so I can move it around it's not outside so there we go there's our gasket and that's really it now we're just gonna drop it in and put in the screws so this again you don't want to bend your thing fuel level so the pump goes in first with the sock then you just kind of wiggle that in there like so and then eventually just the whole thing will kind of find its home in there hopefully Probably should get a new one of these. I think I just broke it, or it was broke. Uh, either way, there's like a little tank in there, the slosh tank. Make sure to clear everything, and then uh, it'll drop in, otherwise it'll get caught on the, the edge of it. You'll see if you're trying to do it. Okay, so this should all sit relatively flush. So, I wonder why, wow, that pump is really down there. The pump is like on the ground, or the, on the bottom of the tank. Alright, so that's it. Now, these, these bolts for the sending unit have a Phillips head on them. So what I would recommend, instead of using the 8mm socket to tighten them, just use a Phillips head uh, screwdriver just to snug them in or at least two so it doesn't move now what we can do is actually test the pump make sure we can hear it running how did I lose this connector again there we go so this will go like that and now I will do key on and we'll see if we can hear anything we can I can hear the buzzing uh, which is good because the old pump did not do that so I'm confident that the truck will actually start again this has been sitting for approximately 10 years I would start it up here and there and again just to, you know get it running and then uh, eventually the pump died because the fuel just got so low in there that it started to rust and this you know there must have been some uh, air getting in here somehow and unfortunately ruined the pump so I put in a cheap pump Amazon pump like $13 and of course that lasted a whole you know day couple days and then I tried to start the truck again and it it was dead so I need to figure out, I need to get these screws in and then uh, we'll hook up the hoses and all that and that's pretty much it. Okay, so we've got our return line here. So this simply goes on to the hard line, like so. There. If I can get it on there. All the way to the end of it it's got a little nub that's good and then our feed line is up here but I don't want to do that until actually I can do that let me get this the washers okay I got our brand new crush washers and our banjo bolt one goes on top one goes on the bottom like so don't forget this bottom one and then through the feed. Make sure no rust goes down the hole. This is a 17 millimeter, in case you're wondering. And there's a little stopper. There's like a little holder so this doesn't spin, which is nice. And then you can also torque it down and it'll kind of hold the line. Um, and then this, I don't know where this gets attached to. I would assume maybe through the screw. I don't know. Maybe it goes through one of these or something. I'd have to look and see where this is supposed to, you know, something like that. Or like that, maybe. 
probably. All right, so that's it. I'm gonna finish tightening up these screws just kind of one by one in sequence. You know, back, forth, left, right, and slowly compress that gasket. And try not to strip any of these out. And once I get them hand tight with the screwdriver, uh, I'm good with that. I'm not gonna torque on them with a ratchet and socket. And then this is our power wire that I need to just leave down there, I guess. Not gonna be using that. I don't even know if that's hooked up or not. Yeah, just kind of go back and forth, you know, crisscross, and then torque that rubber gasket down until it feels unsafe to, tar to, 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 to tighten anymore. And then I'm gonna go get some gas, put the cap on, and we're gonna start this thing up. Okay, got two gallons in the car. Let's start her up, see what happens. First start in years, oh, maybe a year or two since before the pump died. Nothing yet. I hear the pump churning. still for sale I need to go put some more gas in it only has two gallons in it but uh, she's good to go got no leaks so the interior won't smell gassy anymore exhaust sounds nice and burbly like it should maybe a little bit too burbly a little bit sending unit off to check and see but it looks like it's working the lights on and the gauge is accurate well that gauge should be lower so I'll have to check that but yeah we're good thanks for watching everyone see you